State police say two infants had to go to the hospital after their babysitter abused them. Coming up, we'll tell you about her charges. It's a very busy time for travel on this day before Thanksgiving. We're live with a look at road conditions in the bluegrass. Her tough talk from the bench often grabs attention in the courtroom. Tonight, Fayette Circuit Judge Pamela Goodwine tells us how her background and life has influenced her. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening to you. Tonight we are learning more about the case against a Madison County babysitter charged with abuse. Police say she seriously injured two infants in her care. As we first told you here last night at 11, state police arrested 34-year-old Bessie Perkins. Police tell us that one of the infants is still in the hospital nearly two weeks after being injured. Victor Puente has our top story at 6. 34-year-old Bessie Perkins was arrested yesterday afternoon on two counts of criminal abuse. Kentucky State Police say their investigation started earlier this month after two infants, one nine months old, the other four months, both ended up in the hospital. One of those children uh, received uh, fractures uh, to their leg and then and another, the, the youngest of the two, is actually still uh, at UK Hospital uh, receiving treatment. Police say Perkins was the common factor between the children babysitting both of them in her home. Perkins is being held on a $50,000 cash bond. If she is released on bond, one of the conditions of her release is that she not have contact with any children. It didn't surprise me as much as it was someone else. Tiffany Preston says she encountered Perkins long before her arrest, back when Perkins worked at a Richmond daycare. He loved daycare until he got into her class, and he would beg us not to go there. Preston says she eventually stopped taking her son. He'd cry, he screamed, he would beg me not to go to school so that he didn't have to go there anymore. The Cabinet for Health and Family Services says they can't comment on any Child Protective Services cases, but they don't have a record of any license for Perkins for in-home child care services. In Madison County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Perkins' arrest citation says the injuries to that four-month-old came from the baby being shaken three separate times. If you have been out on the roads today, you probably notice a lot of extra traffic. Many people are now traveling to be with family or friends for Thanksgiving. This is a live look at northbound Interstate 75 here in Lexington. No major traffic problems have been reported on the interstate. And here's a look at our live drive traffic map. Traffic on parts of Nicholasville Road and New Circle Road has been slow in the last few hours. More people are expected to be out on the roads for the holiday because of all of these lower gas prices. Monique Blair joins us now live with the very latest. Monique. Well, Amber, AAA says right now until 7 o'clock is the busiest time to travel today. I'm out here right off Winchester Road, and the road is fairly busy. But as you can see behind me, the good news is gas prices are low. Today I am driving back home for the holidays, see my family in uh, Michigan. According to AAA, 42 million people are like Taylor Boris, traveling more than 50 miles this weekend. And with that comes many trips to the gas pump. But good news, AAA says gas prices are the lowest they've been in seven years, specifically for Thanksgiving weekend. Obviously they go up over Thanksgiving weekend. I guess that's pretty obvious, but it doesn't seem as high as they normally are, so it's been pretty, it's been pretty good. The national gas price right now is $2.07, but it appears Lexington is much lower than the national average. We found many pumps charging just $1.76 per gallon for unleaded gasoline. Usually when we travel this time of year, gas is sky high, so it's been really cheap. As far as the busy roads, well, drivers for the most part tell me they're aware that they could run into some slow-moving traffic. Traffic has been very heavy, but we've been making good headway. I say, I mean, <laughs> it's a lot of in and out, a lot of speeding going on, but we're getting there safely. Now, aside from right now, AAA says the next busiest time to travel this weekend is late Sunday evening. Reporting live in Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. What a bonus. Low gas yeah. prices. The weather isn't causing any problems for all of those travelers out there tonight. Pretty good. Yeah, put away your winter coat.
for now. Yeah. The Thanksgiving forecast looking just great. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has more. Chris. Yeah, looking good. You were seeing the live shots out there. No problems from Mother Nature in terms of traveling right now. We look outside with the temperatures. It's been a mild, busy travel day, and it's ending on a nice note with temperatures right now 50 to 55 into much of central and eastern Kentucky. That's pretty good for this time of year, especially as we go into the evening. Those numbers will drop a little bit in through the 40s. Uh, live uh, uh, radar picture now has nothing on it, though a little bit of cloud cover showing up on your Defender radar network. Those are high clouds that are streaming in. The actual storm system producing those clouds is way, way back to the west. Just look how big that bad boy is. Uh, already with snows on the back side of that, that'll head into the plains. Now, we're not worried about snow around here, but that will eventually produce some rain as we go into the rest of that holiday weekend. Not so much tomorrow and into the first half of Friday, but guys, by the time we hit, especially Saturday and Sunday and early next week, more wet times than dry times in that seven-day forecast here in less than 10 minutes. Thanks, Chris. And if you're planning to fly somewhere for Thanksgiving, you may notice longer lines at airport security checkpoints. Part of that is because of extra travelers for the holiday, but many airports are also taking extra precautions following the terrorist attacks in Paris, France. Bluegrass Airport leaders say that much of that extra security is behind the scenes, and they say travelers should not notice anything out of the ordinary. Tonight, Lexington's police chief says he would like the city to hire more safety officers for his department. You'll often see safety officers directing traffic following accidents or power outages. And Sean Moody tells us the police chief says having more safety officers would be good for the city. Lexington police officers get tied up doing a lot of non law enforcement work like traffic control for ball games. For a UK football game, we'll have over 100 officers working. Uh, and most of them are on traffic control, and then they convert over into some security role. So Lexington Police Chief Mark Barnard is looking to recruit some help. There are two safety officers on the force. They're not sworn officers, but they can help out. Barnard wants to add 10 more. He says that would free up sworn officers to do other work. We average about 15,000 collisions a year. Uh, most of those occurring between 4 and 6 o'clock in the evening. So those officers, the safety officers, will respond to those collisions, which frees up sworn officers to do other sworn duties. And they'll be helping with motorist assist, doing traffic control, taking collision reports. Uh, they're going to be fantastic this year during the snow. When the snow hits and they have 10 more people, they can respond to help people with needs. So we're, we're excited about reinventing the program. Chief Barnard says it takes about a year to turn out a new police officer, but these safety officers could be ready in just a couple of months. For now, this is just a proposal. It'll go before the council for a vote soon. Barnard expects it'll pass. People we've talked to on council support it. They're very supportive of law enforcement, uh, want to see more positions, and they're really supportive of getting people back into their neighborhoods. And if it goes well, he expects the program to grow. So I'd like to get the program up, running, and get up to 20, 25 safety officers as soon as possible. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. The council will consider the request next month. She does not hold back when she's talking to criminal offenders in the courtroom, and her voice is unmistakable to most of us in the media. Fayette Circuit Judge Pamela Goodwine has been on the circuit court bench for 13 years. Recently, she let our Miranda Combs spend the day with her to learn how her past helps her make decisions in the courtroom. It's a story that's new at 6. You're going to be glistening here in a minute. It's not a typical invitation to meet her at 5.30 in the morning. One more. Dancing, stretching. Arms out. Instructing a room of women to jazzercise. Oh, yeah, ladies, grab your mats, grab your weights. Let's talk to Miranda. This is where I can come and just be Pam. He has denied her shot, but she's eligible for parole in a couple of weeks. Council, what are, where do we stand? To us in the media, she's Judge Pamela Goodwine. You are 16. Known to yell, gripping TV for us. Guns do not belong in the hands of 16-year-olds. Because had there not been any guns in the hands of these 16-year-olds and 15-year-olds, Antonio Franklin would still be with us today. But the story of her life so far this was her is gripping reality. Life doesn't always go as planned. And simply because it doesn't go as planned doesn't mean you change your plans. It means you just change the process. 
We met Judge Goodwine in her chambers. Pictures of her past and proud moments cover the walls. These memories are here, she says, because of her adopted parents. And I said, well, why did you keep me? And he just said, I looked in those eyes and he said, I just couldn't let you go. Her mother and father's goal for good wine was education. And I remember going to daddy saying, I want to be the first African American to do something. In her late teens, a tragic turn. Her father died of lung cancer and her mother shot and killed by her uncle. I am 19 years old, have now lost the two most supportive people in my entire life. She was in Lexington by then, had found a church home when her body stopped her from finishing school and starting her career. She knew by then she wanted to be a judge, but Crohn's disease had left her in her early 20s at rock bottom. And a doctor telling her she probably wouldn't survive. I said, I'm tired and I'm ready to go. If this is God's will for me, it's okay. At age 25, she survived a surgery and eventually had a complete ileostomy, a procedure to remove her colon. She was in a Lexington hospital for months. He said, if you are lucky enough to go home, it will be very unlikely that you will ever work again. And I looked at him, I was like, are you crazy? Years later, she'd prove her doctor wrong and become the first African American female to be appointed to the bench at age 39. She tells her story not for pity, but for understanding. What she sees in front of her every day is nothing she can't handle. Someone simply standing before me because they're in a jail jumpsuit saying, Oh, I say I'm going to do things differently, therefore I am. She's 55 now, has been on the bench in circuit court for 13 years. She's watched some change their ways. If you could just start making a payment or so, a little, little bit on that. And others never learn. How, why, how, how can you convince me that it'll be different? She questions knowing excuses for living a good life are unacceptable. She's had every chance in the world to use them. Until you have been at death's door, and until you have accepted the fact that you might not wake up in the morning, none of this is matters. Not a case, not a bill, not a possession, not anything. In Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Well, she has been through a lot and survived. As for the youth that she sees in her courtroom every day, Judge Goodwine says she does not think they have any appreciation for the value of life. She said it's almost like they don't feel any sanctity of life. The Lexington woman received a surprise that's been years in the making. The story coming up next.